So these stories are going to be a little bit different. The fact that they're all true and count is not only makes them scarier, but also makes crediting the authors a little bit difficult in certain scenarios. Some of them have asked to remain anonymous, and I'm obviously going to respect that request given the nature of some of these stories. I think it's important for people to remind themselves that everyone's definition of scary is different, and that things like this happen every single day. So I'm hoping that one or all of these stories acts as a reminder to just kind of be a little bit more vigilant of your surroundings. And if you need a refresher on why you hate people just as much as I fucking do, here are four unsettling encounters from Let's Not Meet. All right, I spent the entire slow day at work yesterday reading through this sub. So now I want to share my little story. Me and my childhood best friend, Marie, were around 11 or 12 years old at the time. Marie's family had their own campsite in a provincial park about two hours from our hometown and would spend the entire summer each year living in their camper out there. This particular summer, I was able to go and stay with them for a week, and we were excited to spend our time adventuring around the forest. On the last night that I was there, we decided we wanted to hurry down to the ice cream shop by the lake before it closed. It was early evening at this point, still pretty bright out, but beginning to lose light. The path we took was down a short slope right next to the main road, maybe within 10 feet of thick brush and trees in between. We were walking along, not seeing a single other person on the path in front or behind us. All of a sudden, we hear rustling and snapping of branches similar to the sound of maybe a deer moving through the woods. I wouldn't have thought anything of it, but then the sound of running footsteps followed. Marie glanced back and suddenly grabs my arm, urging me under her breath not to look back. At the same time, the running stopped. I don't know why I didn't ignore her and just get a look for myself. I guess I could sense the very real fear in her voice and chose to listen. We both start to panic getting that feeling as if you were running up the stairs after turning the basement light off. We pick up speed as much as we can without breaking into a sprint, knowing the ice cream shop is only about a minute's walk away at this point. The path soon breaks, and we are in the parking lot. Suddenly, Marie steers me hard to the left, heading towards the lake and the boat rental instead of continuing straight to the ice cream shop. I go along with it silently, understanding ice cream is no longer an interest right now. Marie is clearly panicking at this point. We were both looking around, but it seemed that whatever scared her was nowhere in sight. Marie walks up to the boat rental and gets us a kayak. We climb in and begin to paddle out into the middle of the lake. As we paddle, she tells me that there was a man behind us and that the man had stopped running very abruptly upon making eye contact with her. He had been wearing a long black coat with the hood up despite it being the middle of July. He had a terrible smirk on his face, and she swore that as he stopped running, she saw him put something shiny away in his coat. It appeared as though he emerged out of the bushes after we walked past, given the sounds we heard right before he came running onto the path. We reached the center of the lake and stopped paddling. I pull up my Nokia brick phone that my parents had, thank God, given me just in case. I hand it to Marie and I tell her to call her parents to come pick us up. As the phone rings, I see her look out past me to the shore and go pale, lifting a hand to point at what she's seeing. I turn, and there's a man, stalking his way around the path that circled the edge of the lake, just staring out at us. We sat in the middle of the lake and watched him do two full laps, never looking away from us before finally disappearing. It took a few tries to get a hold of her family. We were freaking out so badly the whole time as the sun got lower and lower. We did manage to have someone come out with a truck, but by the time we reached the shore, it was pretty dark outside. I don't know what he would have done if we hadn't been able to call for a ride. Looking back, I don't know why we didn't just go to the ice cream shop, inform an adult there, and ask her parents to come get us then. But it worked out, and we haven't seen that man since. So, creepy stalker in the woods. Let's not ever meet again. I 
I answered the door for a guy who was dressed as a UPS driver, had the logo on his jacket and everything. I assumed my parents had ordered something that I needed to sign for, so I answered it. After opening the door and greeting him, I realized that not only did he not have anything for me, but there wasn't even a UPS truck in sight. He told me his name was Tony and that he was selling lawn care services around the neighborhood. I started to think that maybe he was just a UPS worker who forgot to change out of his clothes before starting his second job as a landscaper or something. But then he started asking me really weird questions, like if we have any security cameras or large dogs in our house. We do have security cameras, but they're quite hidden, and I told him we didn't. And even though our largest dog is a one-year-old beagle, I told him we had two pit bulls. The entire time, he wasn't even looking at me. He was almost looking around me, letting his eyes coast around the inside of my house, probably looking for something valuable to steal. Then he asked me the weirdest question. He asked why I had my door cracked instead of open all the way. I lied and said it was because I didn't want my pit bulls to see him and start going nuts. Truth is, I always do this when I answer the door for strangers, so I can close it as fast as possible if they wanted to try something. He then gave me a poorly made flyer for his supposed lawn care business and went off down the street to the next house. I shut my door and locked every single lock it had on it. Tony, I hope I don't see you on the news anytime soon. I, 29 female, live in a decent neighborhood. Not the best, but definitely not one usually thought of as super dangerous. It wasn't even that late, like 9.30 p.m., and it's summer in my country, so it'd be dark for another hour or two at most. I had left my friend taking transport back home, and since my friend had left in a rush, there was a thing I wanted to tell them I thought I'd forget once I got home. I had gotten my phone taken from my hands a few months ago, so I was waiting until I was in a safe place to take it out. So I turn a corner, there's literally one block to my house, and this is a pretty small street. I thought I was safe when I suddenly hear someone talking to me. His words were slurred, so I didn't quite get what he said, and it was dark. But after a moment, I understood he was telling me to give him my wallet or phone or something. I stared, and despite the darkness, I saw something in his hand which he was holding very much like a gun. I thought it might have been fake, but still, I was absolutely terrified. For some reason, I looked around and, not too far away, walking towards me was another woman. I screamed for help and ran away from the man, all the while bracing myself for the pain in case the gun wasn't fake. The woman yelled at me to stop running and to get inside the building closest to us, so we did. There, after having a panic attack, the woman told me a man had been next to a car that I didn't see because I was so fixated on the possible gun. I doubt the man wanted anything other than my phone, but still. The fact was, he had a quick and easy escape, and that there was a possibility I could have lost more than just my cell phone. So, to that man waiting for me behind a car, let's not ever meet again. I was around 9 or 10 years old when this happened but I have a pretty good recollection of the events that transpired. So, this was at school. It was during our lunch break, which lasted two hours. I was with a group of friends, playing and joking around like everyone else, when we started to notice people gathering right in front of the school. And when I say people, I mean around 20. Usually, there wasn't anyone around, and if there was, they were usually just walking by. All of these people had their phones in their hand. A woman approached the entry of the school and just started taking pictures of every kid she saw, which we could gather by the flash. An adult from the school came to talk to her and tell her to stop, but she didn't. Instead, she just gave a rather terrifying smile at him and said something I didn't quite hear. Oddly enough, she did it in a way that reminded me of when a mother comforts you, like a reassuring, it's gonna be okay. The man who'd confronted her started to get angry, 
because, well, taking pictures of children like that is weird as hell. Eventually she went away, but that didn't really change the circumstances for long, because everyone else in front of the school was taking pictures of us as well. Literally, everyone. I especially remember a guy in particular who was pretending to be on a call, but wasn't talking. I just kept seeing the flash from his phone, and the rest of us were quick to understand. Us kids thought it was a fun game of sorts, and started playing hide and seek with some of us dramatizing the flash. But then we really started to understand there was a problem when one of them tried to get in through the entryway. This was kind of pointless, since the barriers only went up so high, so if anyone really wanted to, they could just jump it. That's when the headmaster lost all his patience and angrily screamed at the crowd for probably 10 minutes. The police were being called as it happened, and when the people started to calm down, the woman from earlier asked if she could explain why they were doing what they were. The headmaster told us herself that all of these people pretended to practice some sort of voodoo and could sell the pictures they took of us and make us all suffer, etc. To be honest, everyone mostly laughed and thought it absurd, but all the adults didn't seem to be amused by it. To this day, I don't know if what she said was even true. I don't know if anyone was arrested, and I don't know what became of those pictures. The thing I remember most about this whole thing was the way that woman smiled. It absolutely creeped me out. Even today, I'm scared of having my photo taken by friends, and even when it's a family member, I'm still just really uncomfortable. So. To that creepy crowd of people taking pictures of children, let's not ever meet again. <laughs>